Shemai and Noswaitha Sidachi Bobin. Hello, good good evening. How are you all doing? V Heno Craig J Davis. My name is Craig J Davis. Also known as the lay preacher James Davis. James is my middle name and I decided to change my name from Craig to James after my baptism, which was in Swansea Bay, in Swansea, on Saturday the 7th of, of October 2023, last year, which disturbingly is the same date when Hamas attacked Israel. That's just a coincidence. Well, from my perspective, anyway. But, of course, because God is in control of all things, can there really be, then, any such thing as as coincidences? I don't think so. Okay, right, anyway. So, now that I've introduced my... Myself again, I am a lay preacher and I do sermons every Sunday and since it is a Sunday, another Sunday, another sermon and this sermon is going to be something that is is very important to every Christian out there and that and that importance is prayers and this and, and so this video is going to be titled the the importance uh, yeah the importance and the power of prayer and prayers should be the most important thing in the christian life after all what is prayers prayers in layman terms is talking to God, talking to your Father, talking to your Creator. But before I start this sermon, I want to introduce some uh, books, some Christian uh, books, some that I've, some that I've intr- some that I have introduced in the past. So I will introduce them again. But also as well, I will introduce some new uh, books that I've never introduced them before. Right, so we'll start with this one. Right with God by John Planchard. Right, then we got this one. So put that one over there. Right, 1000 Prayers for Difficult Times. This is the one I've introduced be- before as, w- as well. Right. Uh, where to find it in the Bible? Very good book. Well, they're all very uh, good, but this one is also well very good. All right. This one, the journey by the late famous Christian preacher Billy Graham. How to live a faith in an, an in an uncertain world. And now I'm going to introduce you to the books that I haven't introduced before. And that is this, and that is these ones. Let me just get rid of these. Let me just put these to one side. Excuse me, bear with me, thank you. Right. Too busy not to pray. By Bill Highbells. Slowing down to be with a God. Why pray? By Douglas F. Kelly, and the, and he's got a HPD. And then last, and then we got this one. Sorry, George uh, Bellas answers to prayer. And last but not least, we got this one, Overcoming Life's 
difficulties. Learn from the book of Joshua by Peter Jeffrey. And you know what I find so what I find so uncanny, right? I was planning of making a video about prayers. And yet in church this evening, I come across these. Answers to prayer, why pray, and life's difficulties. Now, if that isn't God encouraging me even more to make this video, I don't know what is. Why pray? Well... We will f find out in this video answers to, to, to prayers and life's difficulties. And do you know why I think Christians struggle so hard in this life? No, yes, there are many reasons such as, you know, um, persecution from the world, str struggling with the w works of the flesh, and being tempted by Satan himself. Okay, yeah. So that that is that. Those are also reasons why the average Christian struggles in everyday life. But one of the other reasons why a Christian struggles in life. A lack of prayer, a lack of spending time with God, a lack of reading his words, a lack of, of, of actually going into a, a private area and just spending time with him and praying to him. After all, if you cannot even spend time with God and pray to the one who planned you before the creation of the world, then is it any wonder why so many Christians are struggling with their lives? It's because of a lack of prayer life. And did you know that God's word tells us to pray constantly? How many Christians actually know that? It says that in... right. I've got God's word here. And we will be going to two scriptures, right? That's all. So let's start with the first scripture, right? Chapter 5, verse 17, right? Sorry, I forgot to even give you the book. Hang on. 1, Thess 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 17. That is 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Th that's all it's, right? That is all it says in that verse, but it's very powerful. Right? There's an old saying, less is more. And, and a lot of the times with communication... The less the said, the better. The less the, the said, the more people can understand. There's nothing worse than a so-called religious teacher who just talks and talks and uses so-called uh, complicated, sophisticated words. And they may sound, come across as being knowledgeable and intelligent but when you break it down and you see beyond that they're actually talking rubbish as it says in romans 1 god talks about these people people who claim to be people claiming to be to be wise are actually fools but we will but i'm Going on a bit of a tangent now, okay? So we'll, we'll, st we'll, so we'll stick at this chapter, right? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Meaning as Christians, and I'm speaking specifically here now to Christians, right? No one else. I'm speaking to Christians here. As Christians, 
we should have God on our minds constantly. We should be thinking of God constantly. Pray without ceasing. Meaning as well, we should be talking to him constantly. Not necessarily out loud, just in our minds. Now, you're probably ask, asking me, well, Craig, with all due v- respect, or James, I should now say, because I'm doing this sermon, how can you pray without ceasing? How can you pray const- constantly? Just how? You know, because are you telling us that we should be on our hands and knees constantly and just praying in the same position 24 7 no of course not you cannot do that anyway that's physically impossible right because we all still have to eat and sleep and go to the toilet you know and see family and friends and and take our kids to school or go to work right so i understand why you're coming from but even when we are doing those things we are should still be thinking of god remember he comes first he is the he is the creator of everything genesis chapter 1 verse 1 god created the heavens and the earth what are the heavens he isn't talking about heaven as in the spirit as in the as in the hereafter, right? He's not talking about the afterlife. He's talking about the universe in that context. So if God is the creator of all things, why shouldn't he come first? So you can still speak to God in your heads as you're driving to work or making yourself breakfast or or go into the toilet you know or or whatever that's what it that's it that is what it means in this context pray without ceasing then in verse 18 in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you in everything everything Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What God is saying here, everything means nothing is ex- is excluded. So we should even give thanks to God, even when things are going bad in our lives. But how many Christians do this? In fact, how many Christians even thank God for the good things. How many Christians actually praise God for the good things? Because I can guarantee you, right? I mean, and 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 not all Christians, obviously, but a lot of Christians out there who call themselves Christians, who claim to be Christians, but yet when things are going well for for them, right? They don't give God a second thought. They don't praise him or fa- or fa- or thank him for the blessings that God has given them. Oh no. But yet what happens then when things go wrong? What happens then when things are not going so well in your life? Do you then go to to pray to God and and ask him why are you allowing these things to happen to No! All you do then is complain. Oh God, why are you doing this? Why are why are why are you allowing this to happen to me? That to happen to me. And what happens then, right? In in right, if this continues, they then start to question: Does God even exist? Right. A lot of the right. This is one right. One of the reasons, right, this is why prayer is so important, even in the good and the bad, right? When things are going bad and you start complaining and you complain, eventually God will turn his back on you to teach you, no, to teach you a lesson. And what happens then? 
What happens then to the Christian? The faith becomes weak. They lack in their faith. And then they start to have a go at other Christians. Who is Christian. Who is, whose faith is, is strong. And they will ask and even pander to the other Christian. And just you know, pander and pander and say over and over again. Look. If God is such a loving God, why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? Why is he allowing this harm to me? Why is he allowing bad things to happen to me? Why is he... Well, I'll tell you what. Instead of actually complaining, why don't you go into a private room somewhere, right? And pray to him. And ask him, why is he allowing these things to happen to you? And, and then you'll probably say, oh, well... God isn't going to answer my prayers. How do you know? Have you tried? You know, prayer is so simple. That's another reason why I find why so many people have issue with prayers. It's so simple. It's so simple that even a child can pray to a God. And do you know what I love about prayers? It's the greatest wireless connection ever. There is nowhere on this earth where you cannot pray. For example, it's not as if here there is no signal, so I can't pray to a, to a God. But yet in this chair, if I sit in this chair right next to me, then I can get a signal. So, you know, it's not as if... I can't get a signal here, but I can get a, a signal there. Or I can't get a signal over there, but I can get a signal over there. So God will answer my prayers over there, but he won't over there. No, it doesn't work like that. It's everywhere. He is everywhere. He is omnipresent. You can pray to God everywhere, even sitting on the toilet and defecating. You can still pray to God. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Why not? Why not? I mean, don't we all defecate? Well, so God can't be in a toilet when you have an A number two? Why not? Is he not everywhere? So pray without ceasing and thank God for everything. Count your blessings. James chapter 1 verse 17. Joshua chapter 24 verse... I'll be back. Hang on, I've got a scripture here. I wasn't going to read that, but it just came to me. Hang on. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. Um, I've got a placard just outside the entrance to my flat. So, you know, that gives me encourage as well. So yes, pray to God. But pray to a God through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the mediator between man and God the Father. You pray to a God through Jesus Christ. Remember, he went to the cross to die for your sins. But he also went to the cross and, and he was resurrected as well. We cannot forget the resurrection on the third day, right? To be the atonement, to bring the, the atonement, to bring mankind and God back together to have a relationship. So how do we pray? Well, we will finish in Matthew chapter 6, right? These are the words of Jesus Christ himself. And we'll start from verse 5. 
and we will finish at Yeah, we'll finish at verse th 13, okay? So that's M Matthew chapter 6, from verse 5 to verse 13. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to stand, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of M m uh, that they may be seen of m men. Verily I say unto you, they have their rewards. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the, the, the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for the much speaking. But be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye... For, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen now we'll start at verse 5 right and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to stand and pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, what's, what does Christ m m m mean here? Don't pray in public. Preach the word, yes, but don't pray. Why? Because it's a form of showing off. Hence, why go into a, go into a private room somewhere and pray? Now, yes, other other Christians can have fellowship and pray together, but that is still in the private room in secret. It's not in public, but also on the streets as well. A Christian can privately pray for another person whether for a Christian or a heathen who wishes to be saved. But what he, what he means here is don't pray out loud. Just people won't like it. Right, verse 6. Uh, well said, that's me. Right, uh, now this is important. Verse 7. When ye pray, use not vain repetitions. yes. Christ was totally, Christ, same as God the Father, is totally against repetitive prayer. It happens in the Roman Catholic Church, where they constantly say the Hail Marys over and, and over again. And also as well, other religious groups, such as the, the Hare Krishnas, they pray, they chant, a repetitive prayer over and over again is to get them into a chat into a, 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 a trance where they lose their minds and they go crazy. No, this is what Christ actually said. Just pray the Lord's Prayer, right? Uh, Be naughty, therefore, like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things they need of. Before ye ask him. That is true. 
how many Christians, and I've done this uh, m- myself, right, have actually prayed for things that you need and pray for things that you want. But God already knows the future, so he knows what you need anyway. Instead, just pray the Lord's Prayer. That's all you really need to pray. So, I will end this prayer now to all of you. I will finish off by praying the Lord's Prayer. And to my brothers and sisters in Christ, if you wish to pray for me, then please go ahead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, us, give us our day, our daily bread, Lord, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us, Lord, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever, Lord. Amen. Right to my brothers and sisters in Christ, please comment. Please. Uh, press that uh, like a button please subscribe and please don't hesitate to share this video and to my brothers and sisters in Christ if I do not get to see you in this lifetime I shall see you all in our father's kingdom God bless you all in Jesus precious name and thank you all for your support and um, and for praying for me yes please uh continue to pray and support for my uh ministry thank you all and god bless you all in jesus precious name amen